That is Fred Thompson, the one-time uh, Republican candidate for president, who is uh, now now weighed in as well. We're joined now by Republican strategist Kevin Madden. And, and Kevin, how much is this emerging as a, as a battle that uh, the 2012ers need to get involved in now that we have Palin, Pawlenty, Thompson all saying, or Newt Gingrich all, mm -hmm. all weighing in and saying one way or the other here? Well, I, I, don't, I don't agree with the idea that, that people have to get involved. I mean, 2012, first of all, is so far off. And I don't think people are ultimately going to be rendering decisions in 2012 based on well, what you did. conservative activists are looking but, at but this. But I think thing. there is something at play. There is a certain dynamic here. It's establishment versus the grassroots. And it's also some pragmatists in the party versus the purists. I think many people at the outset were hoping that uh, as part of our kind of renewal as a party, that the pragmatists would learn from the purists and the purists would learn from the pragmatists. That way we could forge a kind of <laughs> a winning kind of uh, uh, a winning uh, formula. As opposed um, to being at odds with Right, people. right. As opposed to being odds with each other. But I think that's what happens in any single parties that you go through these little fights and you and you see and you learn from um, special elections like this and uh, intra-party debates not only here in Washington DC but out in the states but I think this has more to do with a f the fact that the people on the ground up in New York 23 felt that the candidate that was uh, chosen by the party elders so to speak uh, was not a reflection of those uh, those people that are that were uh, the, the, the grassroots part of the party and then as a result um, many of the purists and pragmatists in the national electorate and those in the kind of conservative intelligentsia chose it as a vehicle to have a debate. Right. L let me broaden out uh, to the other elections next Tuesday as well. W Virginia's governor's race and New Jersey uh, is also having governor's race, obviously. How, and this upstate house race, uh, how important, how much can we learn from this election day 2009? Well, I think it's an over analysis to think that it, it's, a it's, it's an absolute template on a national mood or that it happens without any understanding of a national mood or a, a totally un, un, not influenced by a national mood. I think ultimately that every single contest is exactly that, a contest between individuals. But what's most important, I think, is to see how each of these campaigns has built a winning formula around reaching independence and building a center right. And I, I say center right because, of, because I'm a Republican, and I think many of the Democrats are trying to build a center left coalition. But what's interesting is in, in, in Indiana, I'm sorry, in Virginia, uh, McDonald has put together a winning campaign, supposedly, or is in the lead because he has dominated among independents and he has reached out and made a case on economic issues that are driving the majority of voters. And I think if you look at Virginia as a template, um, there's a third party candidate who is surging or doing well because independents have, are in unhappy. New Jersey. In, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Independents are unhappy with both the major candidates, or they at least haven't accomplished their mission when it came to uh, persuading those independents that they were the right candidate, and it's largely because it's been a race to the bottom. And by it the way, hasn't Mike been about issues. By the way, Mike Bloomberg, independent, uh, and an independent mayor running on the Republican line. Right. Right. So I think that mm -hmm. is that, that's what I'm going to take away. I, uh, I'm going to be looking very closely at on Tuesday. How problematic is it to, on health care for for Democrats if they do this without Olympia Snow? Does that one vote make a difference? We asked you that from the other direction when she was on board. Now she's not on board. Sure, I think any partisan bill is going to be looked unfavorably upon by a larger public. Um, Democrats have convinced themselves that this is a debate about public option and access, when instead the debate and amongst the, the general public has been about costs and um, whether or not a costs are being driven down. And I think they're having a harder time making the case or making this a debate about driving down costs when they make it a, a flashpoint argument about whether or not there's going to be a public option in a bill. So I think this is, again, another missed opportunity. I think it's also happening on two tracks. This is a lot more about, a lot more about Nevada politics than people think, Talk about, as yeah. much as it is about forcing um, the White House to get involved and get Harry Reid those last three we'll votes. Talk about the, the voice of activists. You see it there in, in stark relief in, in Nevada. He is responding to that. He needs them on board for his re-election campaign in 2010. Absolutely. And, and here's why I think that's a mistake in Nevada politics. The independents are going to be the ones that right. help him win in Nevada, and their debate is not about, the, they're, they're, they're not running ads, right. but they're more concerned about costs. And at the end of the day, if they pass a bill that doesn't drive down costs, or at least doesn't win the I debate know, on costs. I think this is more about 60 votes than it is about Nevada politics. All right. Kevin Madden, Republican strategist. <laughs> we both disagree with David Chapman. <laughs> there we go. That does it for this edition of Top Line. Be sure to click us on again tomorrow. Twitter.com slash to know, Kevin, how many games the Yankees going to win again? Five.